Hey Gigabyte fans, welcome back to Gigabyte's Motherboards and Bricks channel. My name is Leon Chen and today we're going to be doing another unboxing and overview for you. And with me I have the Z170X Ultra Gaming Motherboard. Now let's jump right into it and then we'll do as we usually do and we'll take all the accessories out with the board and then we'll dive into the details about the features that the board has. So. Directly on the box, you can see that it has that Z170 Intel chipset logo, which means this is using the Z170, it's on the Z170 platform. It does support the Intel 6th generation core processor, and it has an LGA 1151 socket. This board does support DDR4 to 3866 megahertz for XMP profiles, but of course you'd want to check the AVL or QVL list on the Gigabyte support site to ensure that the memory modules that you've purchased from the retailer is compatible with this motherboard. This board has many other features such as ambient surround LED, dual hybrid fan headers, Intel USB 3.1 with power delivery 2.0 and the power delivery actually goes up to 100 watts which is actually very incredible for, for this as this is a first uh, any manufacturer has shown with 100 watt power delivery. It also has triple NVMe PCIe SSD support for RAID 0 and also dual armor with an ultra durable design which we'll show and talk about a little bit more later as we get the board out of the box. So let's go to the back of the box now to go into more detail about the different features that Gigabyte has to offer. Right here you can see all of this red and this is because we have the ambient surround LED. With ambient surround LED you're getting lighting from the dim slots through diffusers that Gigabyte, Gigabyte has implemented as well as the right side of the board with, LED, with that whole strip being LEDs. Also in that amp up audio zone we've separated that digital and analog side and we've done that with LEDs across there as well. Also for the PCI Express slot, so where you have your graphics card placed as well, there's lighting to show, um, to show that ambient surround LED feature. There's dual hybrid uh, fan headers that we talked about earlier. For users that want to trend towards water cooling, uh, this is a great feature as it allows support for both PWM as well as voltage calibration on their motherboard. So if users want to use water pumps or if they're using fans that rely on voltage uh, to set the fan speed, our fan headers are able to support both. We also have the Intel USB 3.1 and this is the one we were talking about with 100 watt power delivery. And as you can see on this board, our, the Intel chip that we provide supports 32 gigabits per second of transfer where the protocol only requires 10 gigabits. So that's a lot of wiggle room and a lot of bandwidth for you to use when you transfer files from your desktop PC to a flash drive or your portable device. And also earlier we were talking about that dual armor. Uh, you'll get an up close view of it as we take the board out. But this dual armor is basically armor for the DDR slots as well as for your PCIe slot. And we've done more to enhance the durability of, this, uh, of the PCIe slots as well. Next to that, we have support for triple NVMe PCIe SSDs in RAID 0. And we have a lot of other features that you guys are happy to hear that Gigabyte has implemented from our U.2 to M.2 support. The use of Intel LAN with a CFOS speed uh, technology and also the, uh, the best multi-graphics spacing available. And you can see that with our two PCIe slots where we've spaced it with an additional gap so you have more airflow. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. High-end audio capacitors as well as uh, something Gigabyte's very famous for are dual BIOS. One of the other features I'd like to point out would be our anti-sulfur resistor. Oftentimes boards are sent back or are made or even uh, had even destroyed because a single resistor on a motherboard is damaged. Now that's no longer the case with the Gigabyte motherboard because we've implemented an anti-sulfur resistor which prevents uh, simple issues from arising. So, Things that, uh, so this, this puts users at ease. Rather than spending uh, hundreds of dollars on a new motherboard, they can actually know that their investment is very well protected. So 
Let's take the board out and we'll talk a little bit more on the technology behind it. All right, so we have all the accessories for the Z170X Ultra Gaming out. We have the board sitting right here looking gorgeous. Let's go over the accessories and see what we have. We have a door hanger. Do not disturb or enter. We have the Ultra Gaming user's manual with the driver disc. We also have a multilingual installation guide, a padded rear I.O. to give it a premium feel. We also have two packs of SATA cables. Uh, of course, each pack comes with one right angle and one straight cable, so there's a total of four cables here, uh, two being right angles, two being straight cables for you to use. We have an SLI bridge, the G connector for easy connectivity of your front panel header so you can actually connect it outside of the chassis if needed and then connect the entire block onto the motherboard. And we have some, uh, some cable ties, Velcro cable ties, so they're reusable with the Gigabyte G1 Gaming on it. This is good to reduce any cable clutter or if you just want to tie things together, it's also very handy as well. So we have that in the box. And of course, we have a G1 Gaming badge for you to stick outside of your chassis so people know what type of motherboard you have. And lastly, we, this is something new that uh, I'm actually very excited to see and hopefully excited to hear how you guys uh, plan to use it. But these are actually stickers for you to attach to your SATA cable so you can actually label uh, such as your various hard drives. This one says HDD1. HDD2, and we even have ODD or SSD. And all of these below have a little white space so you can actually write it. So uh, for example, you can write boot drive, or you can write a storage drive, drive D, E, F, or even Blu-ray disk drive. And this helps keep your hardware organized uh, in relation to uh, your software. So you have your hardware indicators, and on the software side, you can see it in your Windows or um, Linux platform to see how that works, okay? So this is very useful. Let's get this out of the way so we can get into the motherboard. All right, so let's jump right into the board so you can see what other great technologies Gigabyte has provided on our Z170X Ultra Gaming motherboard. So right at the top, you can see there is a system fan header here. We also have our CPU power. That's a 2x4, so that gives you enough power uh, and stability to overclock this motherboard if needed. On the other side of the CPU socket, you can see there's an additional two CPU fan headers. One is your CPU fan and one is your CPU fan optional. Uh, with more users uh, moving towards liquid cooling, this is what one of the feature sets we were talking about where we had dual hybrid fan headers. Uh, one of these fan headers allow, uh, these fan headers allow you to actually implement both uh, voltage calibration or PWM fans on it. So if users wanted to use one PWM for the pump and then they had a traditional fan for the radiator, they would be able to do that as well. As we move over, you can actually see on the side of the board is there's a green or yellow strip here that allows for LED illumination. Now this goes with our ambient surround LED and you can actually see that we've also implemented diffusers on the DDR slots to allow that light to show even more. So you have lighting around the board on the top right as well as on the bottom left, even on the PCIe slots as well. As we move around, you can see there's another system fan header. Our ATX24 pin, our USB 3.0 front panel header, and there's actually a set of pin headers here. Now this set of pin headers is actually for Thunderbolt. If you guys wanted to install any additional Thunderbolt ports onto this board, you can actually do so via an adding card or even a front panel bay card, uh, front panel bay drive, and all you have to do is connect this port and the board will recognize that a Thunderbolt device was attached. So we'll turn the board over to the side now so you can get a better view of the SATA ports that are here. So we have two SATA ports, uh, two and two, so that's a total of four SATA ports, and an additional two ports that are mounted vertically. Now, that gives you enough room to do any of, if you want to install uh, SSDs or mechanical drives, 
And of course, these SATA ports here double up as SATA Express, but when you do populate it with the SATA Express, uh, these two drives respectively will also be populated by that connector. Okay, so keep that in mind. Right below it, you have a connector that might not be familiar to many of you. This is a U.2 connector. Now the U.2 has a transfer speed about 32 gigabits per second compared to the SATA, which is only about 6 gigabits per second. And it's great to be used with the Intel 750 NVMe PCIe SSD. As we move to the bottom of the board, this is the area for the front panel headers. And if you have a G connector, you can connect all of your cables to that G connector and mount it directly into the block rather than trying to insert everything in small cramped spaces. We have another set of system fan headers, two USB 2.0 headers, and of course TPM header and our front panel audio. Now, as you can see, we're using high-end audio capacitors in our amp up audio zone. Uh, this section is all lit up, similar to, uh, so we are still separating that analog side from the digital side of the board. Earlier we were talking about the best multi-spacing for graphics cards and as you can see there's actually an additional slot spacing here so when you have the graphics card that takes up two slots you have one full slot to give it more airflow and room to breathe. Now that does two things, uh, it prevents any thermal throttling and it also helps prolong the life of your components because the heat within the system is now able to freely move out out uh, away from the graphics cards. So that's one of the benefits uh, with that. As you move up, you can also see we have that M.2 as well. So this M.2 operates at 32 gigabits per second. We support a variety of lengths. So this one is 22 millimeters in width and it supports 22 by 42, 22 by 60, 22 by 80, which is already installed in that position, and 22 110. So let's turn the board to the rear I.O. so you can see our various connectivity options. Right here, we have our audio jacks. Of course, you still have your optical audio as well. You have two USB 3.0s with an Intel NIC and CFOS speed for uh, internet acceleration. You have another two USB 3.0s, HDMI output, mini display port output, as well as a mini display port input. Now this is a future feature upgrade. You're able to actually take the graphics signal from your dedicated or discrete card and route it back into your mini display port input so it can output through other uh, methods so you have a display port signal as well. Right here we have our USB 3.1, the red port in a type A, and the oval smaller port in a type C. And of course you still have your PS2 for legacy devices or if you guys have any mice that you guys are very fond of and don't want to get rid of, you can still use that here as well, as well as two more USB 2.0s. Now, we get a lot of feedback from our viewers on YouTube. They want to know the total count of the different boards, uh, of different parts of the board, such as USB. So on this board, we saw six USB ports on the back. We have another six through front panel connectivity, one right here, two on the bottom here. So that's a total of 12. For fan headers, we had one fan header up at the top right here near the CPU power. We had another two for the CPU optional. We had another one on the side right here and one all the way at the bottom of the board. So that's a total of five different fan headers as well. Now, we also said that we had a very new feature for all of you guys, which went with our USB Type-C, and that would be our 100 watt power delivery. So this board supports 100 watts of power delivery through that tiny Type-C connector. All right, so that wraps it up for our unboxing and overview for our Z170X Ultra Gaming motherboard. If you liked what you see, be sure to like the video, subscribe to Gigabyte's Motherboards and Bricks channel for more up-to-date reviews and any new information, as well as if you guys are interested in any contests and promotions, like our Facebook page. As always, my name's Leon Chen, and thanks for tuning in.